my God. That looks like a couple giant titties. What did he say? Hey. Oh. I just touched my head on that and it freaked me out. This is the biggest titty I've ever messed with. I ain't gonna lie to you. I like you, man. You lie a lot. What's up? It's Casey from Casey's Customs. In this video, we work on everything that I have in both of my shops. A total of nine cars. We do something to each of them in this video. We definitely need to thin the herd at some point. But for now, let's get to the footage. Don't forget the So like I said in the intro, I am working on all the cars in the shop. I didn't know what I was going to do for this week's video, and I just had a bunch of shit that needed done on a lot of cars. Not like one big thing on one car, but a lot of little stuff. The truck is leaking coolant. The Monte Carlo isn't running right. The Mustang has an air leak. The Blazer needs a drive shaft. We get new wheels and tires for the Supernatural car, and we get the Model A running and we're gonna be taking it for a drive in the next video that'll be next tuesday's video so a ton of fun stuff and this one's gonna kind of just be me bouncing around a little bit kind of like a vlog style video when i first started doing the second video of the week on the channel they were all kind of like vloggy and just fun and that's kind of what this one is going to be I'm going to shake it up a little bit i think the first thing i'm going to show you is me getting the wheels put on the supernatural build because it is so badass and i love how it looks this is an amazing coincidence and it's probably just saved me, I don't know, 800 bucks. So if you've been watching this video at all, the 57 Chevy had Kragers on it and I don't like Krager wheels very much. They were on every single car in the 90s when I went to car shows with my dad and I just hated that every single car ran Kragers. So I've never been in love with them since then. So I got rid of the Kragers and put Steelys and White Walls on it. Looks 10 times better. I love it. I'm looking at tires for Baby, the 67 Impala that I'm building right now. And I'm looking at the exact size because I want it to look like a clone from the TV show. And they run BF Goodrich with the letters out, 275.60 in the rear, 215.70 in the front. And I was like, well, I think, I think the old Kragers on the 57 were BF Goodrich. Look at this shit, I cannot believe it. Not only is it the exact tire design BF Goodrich Radial TA, but 275.60 in the rear, 215.70 in the front. Those are the exact tires I need to have it be a correct clone to Baby on the TV show. I mean, that the odds of that are crazy. This saved me so much money. I got to looking online, these big old wide ones in the back, that's like a three or $400 tire. They're very expensive. And the tread on these looks absolutely perfect. Oh, I, I, the coincidence of that is amazing. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to take these down to the tire shop. We're going to get rid of the Kragers. Like I said, I hate Kragers. And we're going to put baby's wheels on because I just finally got all four wheels. So let's do that. Check them out. They are awesome. We got the tires put on. Look at the size of these fucking things. Holy shit. Whenever I was looking up the tire sizes... One of the threads, there's several threads online on like forums of people building Baby, the 67 Impala. And whenever people were asking about the tire size, everybody was like, these are truck tires. These are truck tires. Well, that's what they ran. That front wheel is what most rear wheels would be. And then that rear wheel is basically a fucking drag slick. The good news is with the Impala chassis that we're running, 96 Impala chassis that we're running, we got plenty of room in there and I can come out basically more than enough the only thing i'm actually worried about is wide as these are i'm worried they don't come out far enough to the lip i've done plenty of measuring and it looks like they will but you never know until you get them bolted up so uh yeah naturally nothing can go perfectly smooth even when you're doing something as simple as taking the wheels off and putting new wheels on we have a stripped out locking lug nut i even have the locking lug nut socket for it but it's stripped down in there. I hammered the shit out of it. That didn't help. It just, it's on there super, super tight and it's stripped out. It looked like it was already stripped before I even started. So that's not fun. And here's the other bad news. Every single lug nut that has been on this car was on super, super tight, like ridiculously tighter than it needed to be. So that ain't gonna pop off easy. We're gonna do the old weld a lug nut to it. Try not to get weld all over the rim and uh, see if that doesn't do it. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Man, I can barely get my welder down in there. That's not good. Well, if you're gonna weld it, weld it a lot. <laughs> Let's 
go. Ah, perfect. Beautiful welds. <laughs> yes. All right. You better turn up. You better be there when I shake. Watch me rocking if I can't stop. If I should fall, just go ahead. Go and catch me. Check her out. Oh, man, that looks good. Also, what if we bag it? I mean, I know we're bagging everything these days, but God damn it, we're pretty cool bagged. As you can see, I got these beautiful wheels that are going to go on. Now, some of you might see these and go, I think I've seen those before. You sure have. These were on my 1951 Chevy Fleet line. I ended up taking these off and put a different set on because these are my dad's. I stole them from him, put them on the 1951 Chevy. I loved it. It looked great. He ended up stealing them back because he's a real asshole. I don't know why. I stole them fair and square. He stole them back, but... Like all things need to be, balance is brought back to the force. I stole them from him a second time, and we're putting them on the Model A Roadster. I got the wheels put on. They look absolutely perfect on this Model A. It hasn't had four wheels with good tires on it since I've owned it. Here I am tweaking a couple things on the carburetor. We're trying to get it running where it can actually idle. It has never idled on its own. We're going to try and get that done right now. My dad's coming over to help. been wrenching on the model a like crazy me and dad got it running we're gonna be taking it for a drive here pretty soon we won't be able to do that in this video because i gotta get this to richard the cop also cop schedules i am finding out are absolutely crazy and i'm not a fan of them so just another reason to i'm joking it's a joke but you know anyways what we're gonna do right now drive shaft shop called me and they actually have the drive shaft done for baby we needed it lengthened three and three quarter inches because we have stretched the frame four inches they have it ready to pick up and i could just run down there and grab it right now but we need to have the drive shaft shortened for the blazer if you're not following this used to be a long bed so i need like i think two foot or something like 18 inches out of the drive shaft so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and get that measured up so we can take that down with us that way it saved me a trip basically is what i'm getting at so Let's work on her for a little bit. Since this is the video we're working on everything, I figured it's a perfect time to do it. Let's check it out. So the long bed C10s have a carrier bearing. So essentially you have two drive shafts and a carrier bearing. This is actually great for airbags because instead of having one shaft trying to do all this, you know, articulation with the bag moving up and down, since we have a carrier bearing, this can just go straight to there. It'll be a tiny little drive shaft. And then we will have a whole other drive shaft back here that will have plenty of play in it, which is really, really nice. Because sometimes whenever you do this, if there wasn't a carrier bearing there, we would have to make a big giant drive shaft tunnel because, you know, your, your drive shaft might come all the way up to here whenever it's all the way up and all the way down. So very exciting. As you can see, it's going to be a little stubby guy. Probably only give you about, I don't know, a foot there. And then it will, luckily we'll just have a normal rear section, which is nice. So let's get to measuring it. What is that? What is that? Holy what? shit. Oh my god. That looks like a couple giant titties. I just touched my head on that and it freaked me out. Uh, I want to pop it, but I probably shouldn't pop it. Can I Can I pick that up over? <laughs> All right, I got to get the camera in here. What the shit? That is probably full of just mosquito larvae and shit. Ugh. Really have an urge to just poke it. 
you know, with a screwdriver or something, but I don't want to. Hopefully I can pick it up over. I don't know if I can. Oh, that's, oh, that's heavy as shit. We might have to pop it. I've ever messed with. I ain't gonna lie to you. Oh, we're gonna get a tool. That's what separates us from monkeys. Uh oh, do not touch me. <laughs> Please don't touch me. Let's go. That actually worked. I cannot believe it. <laughs> All right, let's measure this drive shaft. Oh, we got plenty of play on that. That's nice. Oh, I mean, it's right at 10 inches. Okay, it's perfect. All right, let's take it down. Check it out. New drive shaft, brand new U-joints. So excited, looks perfect. We're not gonna put this on today though. That's gonna be a next week video. We have more problems that we ran into, naturally. I feel like that meme from uh, Malcolm in the Middle where the dad, everything he touches, something breaks. <laughs> because let me show you so i take the 55 chevy truck it's gonna be over here in a second i take it down to the drive shaft shop it's overheating even though today it isn't super hot so i'm going oh i got a cooling issue i need to pull it in the monte carlo was right here so i was like oh i just need to move it over it's out of gas so it died in the middle of the alley i had to have the neighbors help me push it back there it also sounds absolutely horrible so i got something going on there i'm gonna tweak it a little bit but right now we're gonna pull the truck over oh fun fact the Mustang has a, one of my front airbags is leaking and I want to look at it too. So I'm probably just going to pull it all over here and we'll just look at everything because it's one of those videos where we just fix everything. Let's get to it. So since this was having issues with coolant. It was a little low, so that might've been my problem, but it shouldn't be low because I topped it off just a couple days ago. So I'm gonna turn this on, let it run. We'll see where our leak is coming from. I have a feeling if it is leaking, it's the freeze plugs. These S10s are horrible about the freeze plugs. And I think I've already replaced all of them once. And then I did the passenger side again. So I've done that side twice. So we're gonna fire it up, let it run. The Mustang has a leak in the front passenger side bag. I assume it's the line, uh, cause I tested the bags. It shouldn't be those, but we have added onto the lines whenever we started to finish it up. So it could be one of the connectors. So I basically got it lifted all the way up. Looks like monster truck right now. And we're gonna see whenever it starts coming down and then I'm gonna get some soapy water down in there and start checking it. So what is going on with this thing? Because it was running perfect and it is running like dog shit now. It did run out of gas, which is obviously a problem, but when it was running, before it ran out of gas, it sounded really, really badly. It's kind of scared me, so we need to look at that too. Also, I'd like to add, uh, it drives me crazy how dirty everything is, but it's because it's just been raining. It rained two days ago, rained yesterday, rained again this morning, and it's supposed to rain tonight and tomorrow. So they're all really dirty and they look like shit, but there's literally no reason to wash them right now because they're just gonna get rained on. The Mustang isn't because it's over there, but it still gets a little bit of rain under the carport. If I was smart, I'd put it under that one because it's completely sealed, but you know, I'm not smart. <laughs> you better turn up. You better be there when I shake. Watch me rocking if I can't stop. Okay, great news on this one and the Mustang. This one, I let it run for like 20 minutes. The only fluid I lost 
was out of the overflow. So I think we're good. I think I might've just been a little too low and stuff was happening. Also, I spilled some up here, so it looked like there was water up there. So it looks like we're good, uh, but I'm definitely gonna keep an eye on it because like I said, these S10s love to pop freeze plugs. I've done it a bunch. We're good there. Mustang was also luckily an easy fix. One of my push to connect fittings had just kind of pulled itself out a little bit. Probably from all the driving, I have been driving it extremely hard <laughs> lately, just beating the living shit out of the poor thing because I like to drive them like that. Uh, but it just needed to push back in and we're good. As you can see, it has not dropped even a tenth of an inch and it's been sitting out here for like 30 minutes. Bad news on this one though, I see no reason why this should be making a loud noise. So we're gonna have to definitely start ripping this apart, um, which is okay because I didn't want to do some more stuff because I was gonna paint all this inside before we painted the outside. But I didn't know that I wanted to take it apart. Yeah, there's nothing scarier than when that thing's running and you hear a bang. But uh, yeah, we'll get it figured out. I'm not gonna dig into it right now because we're playing with other stuff right now. And in the next video, me and dad are gonna take this thing for a drive. I've done a ton of work to it. I'm obviously not gonna show it all in this video. Uh, but we got the carburetor rebuilt, brakes rebuilt, just everything's ready to go. We're going to take that for a drive probably tomorrow, but that will be in Tuesday's video. But, uh, yeah, because technically I'll be driving on Saturday, but uh, pretty excited. But yeah, what I'm going to do now, since we've worked on everything, go down to my other shop and mess with the 57 Chevy and probably mess with the 56 Chevy. So yeah, we're just working on everything in this video. I kind of like it. We took the 57 Chevy the other day for its first real first drive. Now I've said first drive 10 different times, but it always ended horribly. Didn't go very far. I actually drove this thing for 20 minutes straight, smiling my ass off. I'm like almost getting choked up and crying towards the end because I was talking about how much I love a 57 Chevy. Never thought I'd own a two, uh, two door hardtop and here we are, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it was running okay, but uh, we did have a misfire, and the problem is over here on this custom-made header we did. It actually, I don't know if you can see down in there, but this spark plug wire pops off really easy. Oh, look at that. I fucking melted it. Well, that'll do it, too. So, we need to fix this problem. This is obviously a pretty big problem, and I think I'm 99% sure I'm going to have to remake this header, but I'm going to try and see if I can't put a Band-Aid on it for now before I do that to see if it'll fix it or not. What I'm going to try and do is basically make my own plug wire get down in there to that, and then we'll fire it up and see if we can't get it because it, it'll stay on there, and then, you know, you hit it hard or start you know, driving it to a little too rough, a little too much fun, and it pops right off and it'll start shooting a uh, code, obviously, cylinder five issue, well, it's because that's unplugged. So I'm gonna mess with that for a little bit. Hopefully we can get that figured out. Okay. see if it was fixed <laughs> i was running not great it was okay ish but not great and i was like what the hell's going on let me check and as i looked over here i could see sparks coming out of the number five cylinder onto the header so we're definitely gonna have to remake the header i was thinking maybe i can get a you know shorter spark plug i don't know most likely i'm just gonna have to tweak that header as you can see from how far it is away from the here let me zoom in as you can see how, how far it is away from the steering box, that's my problem. I was worried about that steering box, so I really went in, and I think I just went in a little too far. So hopefully I can just tweak that header and I'll have to buy a whole new one. But I don't know, I'm gonna look up, maybe there's a way I can, I don't know, figure it out. It's running great other than that, but as soon as it gets that code, it starts basically flooding itself, which is what it does if you have a cylinder not hooked up. So that's okay for now. I know I need to work on it, but I'm gonna do a bunch of research 
hopefully I can find like a shorter plug or maybe a really thin Y. I don't know. I don't know. Most likely I'm just going to have to redo that manifold. Also, while I was messing with that, I got my tilt hood working a little bit better on this truck. The tilt hood was, whenever it would open, it would only open to like there. And I just needed to adjust a couple things. It's still not perfect, but it is a hell of a lot better than it was before. Like I said, for some reason it would only open to like there. And it was a real pain in the ass. But now, got it swinging all the way which is pretty good. Also, I have to get my carburetor back. I stole the carburetor off of this and put it on the blazer before because uh, I just wanted to get the blazer running. But since Holly sent me all new stuff for the blazer, I need to get that back on here because I had this thing running and basically ready to drive other than brakes. But transmission, all that shit was working like a month ago. So we definitely need to get back on that. So I messed with this one. I messed with that one. I've messed with every car in the fleet other than the 56. So I'm gonna play with this one and then we're gonna wrap this video up because if you've worked out of eight out of the nine, you gotta work on the ninth. So this one is always rear end stuff lately because my rear end suspension binds like hell and it's just been an ongoing thing. Uh, the airbags on this was done by another shop. I've basically redone everything, but the way they kind of set up the Watts link, I'm not in love with. I think I've tweaked it enough where I can get it fixed, but I'm gonna crawl under there and uh, see what we got going on. <laughs> It's impossible to tell on time lapse, but I've been messing with this for like an hour. And check it out. Look, look watch when it comes down. Oh, and watch when it goes up. Smooth like butter. So she used to go up like this. Like. It kick one in, kick one in, kick one, in, and then go up like that, and then same thing when it go down. I go do 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 do. But oh, she's money now. I only have I got everything done except two of the um, rear watts link because for some reason they it, it has a huge space in it. I've never seen it before, and it takes a funky bushing. And I thought I had the right one. I don't. It, basically, it's like a misalignment spacer. I think they call it. I need two of those for the top and bottom, but the binding shit that we had going on is completely fixed, which is awesome. So it's a four link. So you have four bars and then you have two other bars in the back on the Watts link. So there's six different bars. If anything's out of alignment, if anything, you know, isn't adjusted properly, it just binds and has issues. And we finally got it all figured out. We still need to get the shocks put back in there, but this is huge. Um, I shouldn't have, it should not have to come back out again. Unless for some reason when I change those uh, misalignment spacers, I have to take it out, but that's okay. Cause the main, the hard thing was getting all the bars where they needed to be. They're, you know, they're locked in now to where they won't change anymore, but they had this thing all fucked up. And I have spent more time under this thing than you would imagine. I've had the rear end out. It's a custom made rear end with custom axles. I've probably had it out 20 times and I can pull it out pretty damn quick now. So um, I, the times I've had it in and out, I didn't fill it up with gear oil just in case. Uh, but now basically I can get it in gear oil, order a different misalignment spacer because it's still just a little bit wiggly. But, uh, oh, it's so huge. I've been waiting on this for entirely too long. I'm ready to get this baby going. Dan has been messing with the motor. He's also got the, this has a 2012 Camaro dash in it. Uh, he also got the dash basically working. All the stuff is lighting up like it should. So finally making some progress on this old girl. She has been here for entirely too long, but the customer has been really cool. He understands that YouTube kind of blew up and became its own priority, uh, but he's been patient enough because it's definitely time to start knocking this thing out. But we worked on all nine cars that I am building uh, in this video and that's fucking crazy. <laughs> All right, I can't believe I'm going to do this, but there is a growing faction within my community, within the Casey's Customs family. I believe it started with a guy named Bob. I could be wrong, but he had said on one of my videos, throw a hammer. That's all he said, because I was throwing hammers at something else, and then I haven't done it for a long time. He said, throw a hammer. And then another video went by, and he said, you need to throw a hammer. And then another video went by and then he said, hey, it's time to throw a hammer. You haven't th thrown a hammer lately. Because he has said that on 10 different videos, now other people have joined in. Casey, you need to throw a hammer. Casey, it's time to throw a hammer. No bullshit. In the last video, I saw it 10 different times. 
It's time to throw a hammer. Casey, throw a hammer. It's time to throw a hammer. So I have to put this to an end right now before it gets entirely too big. And it's just 10,000 comments on every video where somebody's telling me to throw a hammer. I'm going to let this faction win by throwing a hammer at my brand new toolbox. Also, it's too nice. It needs to have a little dent to be in this shop. So it's time. I hope all of you are happy. You are making me do this. This is a dead blow. It's three pounds. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Ooh, that is a good dent. Check it out. That could have been a lot worse. We got a really bad dent right there. <laughs> <laughs> this is the drawer oh no oh no it's good okay okay i think the fact that the drawer has a little bit of play in it that definitely saved it well, we got a doozy i don't know if you can see it on camera but it has sunk in quite a bit that three pound sledge didn't play around so i'm happy we did it the brand new toolbox finally has a dent in it and i hope that the hammer faction within the community is pleased i have nine cars that i am building we worked on every single one in this video that's absolutely awesome i can't believe it some of them were a lot less than others I think I only spent, you know, 20 minutes on the 57 Chevy. And then I think the Model A I spent a full day on, eight hours or something. The next video on Tuesday is going to be of the Model A. Me and the old man are going to take it for a drive. We haven't done it yet, but uh, we basically got everything done. I'm hoping to do that in the next day or two and get that on film because it's going to be so much fun. That's uh, mine and his build together. It's like a super budget build. We're trying to do like a... $1,500, $2,000 budget build Model A. This was kind of a weird vloggy style video, but over three days, I worked on a little bit of everything, got a lot of shit done, which is awesome. We definitely need to thin the herd because of those nine cars, seven of them are mine. So that's a little excessive. We're gonna have to do a giveaway on something. I know it's not gonna be the 57 Chevy. I know it's not gonna be the Mustang because we're gonna be doing you know, car show rounds with the Mustang because Holly partnership. So I don't know, we're gonna figure something out at some point, but we have to do it right now. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but my neighbor, <laughs> my Mexican neighbor is yelling at somebody. What does chinga mean? Ching, chinga? Chinga something, chinga, chinga. I heard him say chinga five times. I don't know, does that mean girl? Is that, no, that's chica. I don't know, anyway. If you're new to the channel, this was kind of a cool way to see all the stuff that we have going on. We have built a ton of cool shit on here. We're going to keep building a ton of cool shit, so stay tuned for all that. If you are not subscribed, please hit that button now. If you are subscribed, make sure you have your post notifications turned on by clicking the bell. You'll be notified every single time I post a new video. For the coolest merchandise on the planet, go to caseyscustoms.com. We have a ton of cool hats right now, and I have a bunch of designs coming out. We've also kind of revamped the way we're doing our shirts. They're a little bit higher quality than they was before. Very, very exciting stuff. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, comment, all that good stuff they tell you at the end of videos, and check out some more of my other videos. Peace. I love you.